So thanks uh, to all of you for introducing yourself. Now we will begin to uh, work on the responsive. Um, just before we start, uh, do you know or do you have a definition of responsive design? What does responsive design mean to you? Just curious to see what you say. For me, responsive design um, works across any browser on any device and is optimized, design optimized for that device without mm -hmm. changing the actual physical code of it, just changing the CSS, not changing the content, but changing the CSS, changing the, the way it's structured around the width and height of the screen. Uh, yes, that's an excellent definition, actually. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's the idea that the content you want to display on the web should adapt to the device or screen resolution. Uh, that's the whole idea. That's why it's called responsive, because it responds differently according to the device you are using. So, of course, you would go cross-browser on all browsers, uh, web browsers, and also all devices, thanks to today's HTML, uh, universal language on all devices. And this is the idea that really should adapt to the device. That means it's not necessarily going to be the exact design, like you say, talking of CSS, that it could readjust or fit this or that device. This is the whole idea of it, exactly. In order to provide to your viewer or audience the best user experience possible, you know, that's, that's the whole idea, that responsive design should be flexible and optimized, like you say, so that the viewer can really uh, have the best experience possible with the content. This is basically the idea, yes, very good. So what I will do now, I will uh, launch the screen share option and uh, you should no longer see me, but see my screen. Tell me if it's fine for you. Yes, all yep. good. Okay. Yep. So now I'm going to uh, switch to Clint and we're going to work with Clint to see how you can do some responsive design with Clint. So uh, like I was saying, the idea that the content should adapt to the device uh, actually works in sort of two ways, two main ways. The first way uh, is made with breaking points. That is to say, given a certain width, uh, for example, a certain given content would be displayed on two lines and not one line anymore, if you understand, for example, for text or something like that. This is what you do when you work with the responsive design in WordPress or things like that, for instance. Another way to, to, to work with responsive design, and that's the second way, is the way we chose and claim to, 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 to do responsive, is really to adapt to the window for each and every element you would uh, decide the way it will react on a different device and screen resolution. So I'm here I have a couple of projects, a few projects. I'm going to start to play with a sequence from the demo project. So I'm going to open the demo project. And first of all, it is important I'm going to go to the project general settings that you probably all know. In the previous webinars, we've been through that. As you know, general information about your project is also the metadata for the search engine optimization, such as description and tags, can be very useful. And then you decide a given ratio to your project and a given width and age. Here are the default settings we let, 970 pixel width by 545 pixel eight on a 16 per nine by nine ratio. That's the thing. But here, what you need to do is to enable the responsive mode if you want to make your project responsive. And by the way, uh, it is recommended, we do recommend that when starting a new project, you should think if you want to make it responsive or not. And if you would like to, it is recommended to do that from the start. Why is that? Because it would be easier than doing it in the middle of your project once you created many sequences, okay? So, uh, first of all, you need to update your Clint because Clint responsive uh, layer is only available since Clint 
2.11, I believe, and today we're in clean version 2.12. So if you have uh, an older version than clean 2.11, first you need to update clean so you can be able to add the responsive mode. Okay, so enable the responsive mode and that's it. Um, now I'm going to here into the jazz demo project that you all probably know, create a new sequence to make a sequence. So right click on the storyboard to create a sequence. I'm gonna name it responsive. Here in the property window, I'm gonna change the color so we can maybe see it better, make it big and give it another color to work more comfortably. Here we are. Now we're gonna work on the sequence. So let me double click to enter the sequence. So what's new now, thanks to the responsive mode, is actually, as you can see, below the canvas, the WYSIWYG editor that you all know, we now have three icons. What do they represent? The first icon on the right represents uh, your project at its dimension as uh, say in the general information. In our case, 970 pixel width per 545 pixel height, right? This is what it is. Here, the second uh, icon here represents an iPad viewed on a portrait mode. And the third one uh, should it's a little buggy here, but it normally represents a smartphone viewed on a landscape mode, right? You see? And so switching from here to there, you will be able to uh, have a brief different look on how it displays on different devices. But there is another way to do that, and I will show you that uh, in a moment. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to import a video. So I'm going to go here in the media library, look for a video, and I will grab the chorus video, drag and drop, here it is. And let me select the media, remember it's a light in yellow, and here I'm going to make it a sync master. So this way I know it's going to be here all the time. And that's the default duration for the sequence, the time of this media, the duration of this media. So, if we take a look at this video now, in the video property window, let's stick to the general settings. Well, we can first lower the volume because we don't need this volume really much. And remember, for those who attended the previous webinars, beginner and advanced, we've seen what fit to window meant. When you put a video, whether 16 by 9 or whether 4 by 3 ratio, Remember, we could uh, make it fit to the window. What you need to know is when you're in a responsive mode and you import video, the first thing is that the fit to window is the default setting. It will fit uh, the old player, okay? And how does it fit the old player? Well, actually there are two ways. And here we have some responsive settings, but we're not gonna take a look at those right now. For now, hitting the minus sign, we'll see that later. To see how the video fit to window uh, behaves, we need to go here to the fill options. And this is what we are going to begin with. The fill options are either zoom or letterbox. Do you know what that means? Hello? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. So, but before we see, let me show you something responsive. I'm going to play this sequence. Remember to play the sequence, you can just go run here. It also works with the keyboard shortcut command R, control R if you're on the PC. And uh, it also works by clicking this little button here. So let's take a look here. So here we have a video. I, 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 I lowered the sound. And the first responsive thing now here will be uh, this that simply uh, changing the browser window, the size of the window of my web browser, the content readjusts itself automatically. So this is already a first, even without you doing anything, a first uh, responsive reactions, 
okay? Now, if we think about this video, I don't know why this project has no footer. Let me just quickly take a look. Why don't you have a footer? I would like to see the footer, thank you very much. So, <clears throat> and about this video, uh, as I say, when, let me play it again. Here it is, here's our lovely clean footer that I like. And you can go, you can see that your project viewed as your audience will see, as your viewers will see it, is um, it goes full window. It goes full window in your web browser. And I like that pretty much. I really believe um, it goes, um, how would you say, much more immersive this way. You know, you could open your project this way and here it fits the old window. And by the way, so that was a good thing about first responsive reaction and that it goes always now full window. Even though it has a size of its own of a 970 by 545, it would really readjust. And this is what we're going to deal with now is how each and every element behaves in this flexible uh, web window, right? In order to make responsive the way we want. By the way, I would just like to say that I just saw here that you are writing things in the chat bar. It's best to speak because I don't see that while I'm using Clint. So I saw that Abkazi said, is it different from light and professional version for the adaptive function? The answer is yes. The responsive uh, mode is only available for Clint professional edition. Doesn't work with the light edition can only be accessible for if you have the professional edition or if you upgrade to the pro edition. And that explains uh, the difference of price between the light and pro edition. And secondly, Melody just said, you can see the screen. Can you see it now? Yeah, no, it's fine. It's Okay. But yeah, really I can see it now. Okay, good. But really feel free to interrupt. Yeah. But I need you to speak because when I'm using Clint, I no longer like that, as you can see. You see the same thing that I see. I no longer see the Google Hangout window. So if you chat in the bar, I'm not going to read that. So best to speak. Okay. So that's the first thing. Um, no problem. So, so that's the about this video. And what I was talking about, about the fill option and the fit to window is really, actually it's a relationship between the content and its container. In this case, the content is the video itself and the container is the video box uh, surrounded in red, as you know in Clint. This is the container. And what type of relation would you like between your content and the container? For example, if your video, the native size of the video you imported here in the media library is bigger than your player, in this case, your video will be cropped, right? And let's say the video is cropped, you don't want it to be cropped. How can you do? Well, in this case, I would suggest you try the letterbox. And if you select letterbox, well, in this case, for example, let's switch here to the tablet landscape mode, portrait mode, I'm sorry. As you can see, I have a letterbox. And this is what I have. And those are transparent stripes on the top and the bottom of the video. And if I made it bigger here, I would change with the end of uh, the size of my player. I would see how it has stripes also. That means my media will be displayed totally. I will never crop it, but I would have uh, transparent stripes left and right or up and down. Um, transparent stripe, you would say, oh, those stripes are not transparent, they're black. Actually, they look black, but they're not. What is black, as you probably know, is now I'm clicking on an empty track so I can add the sequence property window. What's black actually is the background of the sequence, but it might as well be uh, green or red, you know. And so really, you need to understand that the container gives you transparent stripes, right? Just wanted to clear this. Now, Probably you noted when I switch from uh, 
to portray iPad tablet mode to the size of my player here. You might as well say desktop, but it's really more accurate and precise and to say the dimension of the player because when I click, I came back to what I had before because now I can change it this way, you know, and then I'm losing the size of the uh, my project, I mean the dimension. Going now to the portrait iPad mode and switching back to the native proportions, right? So don't worry, if you change it, you can always come back at any moment just by a simple click to your native project dimensions. Is that clear? Yes. Thank you. Um, before I get a little more into the zoom filling option, I would like to talk, uh, talk about the handle here, right? As you see, the handle allows you to change the size of your player. Actually, it's quite good, but maybe also quite confusing. Can be confusing because you would get to certain ratio. For example, if I would go like that and then would play it in the web browser, it doesn't exactly does what I have. So if you don't want that to be confusing, I would really, before, I mean, unless you're a responsive design expert, it's best maybe not to work with that. It could be confusing. You can use those, and actually here is a little buggy because normally it should be a smaller display. This is always good. And this uh, to keep your um, native dimensions, right? So let's switch back to this video. Now I will not go to letterbox, but work with the zoom. And when you work with the zoom, you probably noted that here you have another drop down, a second drop down to have choices. And because let's say it is cropping, right? If in the case your video is too big or in the case you are resizing your uh, browser window on the web or your users is doing that. So it can be have a reference point that can be the center or you could say I would like it to be cropped from the top left or the top right or bottom left or bottom right. Let me, for example, select the top left, for instance. In this case, that would be probably better because the character here talking is sort of more on the top left part of the image. And take a look here, we have sort of a yellow book. So let me save and let me take a look on the web. So here it is, and if I change and resize the web browser window, you probably can see that the reference point here on the left will not be cropped. It can be cropped some other ways. You know, if I do that, a bit strange, but it's never cropped from the top left angle. And this is when you use the zoom, you will crop your video at some point because the ratio will not fit the video ratio, but you will never crop from the place you just saved. In this case, the top left, right? Is that clear for you? Yeah. That's clear. What about footer? It uh, don't resize itself. That's true. That's a very good remark. Let me. Excuse me, I just cut it. I'm very sorry. Are you here? Yeah, he's just getting back on the call. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I pressed Command R, but in Hangout, yeah, not in Clint, so I, I quit. Very sorry. <laughs> Press the wrong button. Everybody here? Everybody's back? Let's wait before Abkaz is back. I'm very sorry. We can't hear you, Simon. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I'm sorry, I just okay. muted my microphone. Yeah. yeah. 
better. <laughs> okay, excuse me, I just pressed the command R, but I was in Hangout, not Clint, so just left okay. you all. Just wanted to make sure that Ab Abkazi is back. Abkazi, are you here? Because that was yeah, about yeah. your question. Okay, good. So now let me go back to Clint and try not to be messy. Launch that. And uh, I'm very sorry because now what I need to do, obviously, is <laughs> to launch the screen share option. Excuse me. So do you see my screen now? Okay, sorry for the problems. Now let me play that. And about the footer, it is true, as we need the footer to always be here, uh, it reacts um, proportionally. It doesn't keep a fixed size because we wanted your um, viewers to always have access to your footer and you see if I'm going smaller you can see here those text mm -hmm. will disappear but the small icons will still be here right mm -hmm. that was about your questions that's that okay thank you yeah no 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 problem that was a very good question by the way mm -hmm. and uh, so that's the thing we need to know about uh, when you import a video and work on a responsive mode First of all, the default thing is the fit to window because we believe it looks more immersive, that it fits all the window. But if you resize it, it will crop. So you don't want to crop it, you go letterbox and you have transparent stripe up and down or left and right. You don't mind cropping it, select the zoom filling option. But if you select the zoom, be aware that you have the possibility to select the reference point from which uh, the video will be cropped. Is that good? Is that clear enough? Yeah. Uh, okay. One more question, by yes. the way, uh, about the ground. Can we change it from black to something? From black to what? To what? Uh, from black to color. Of course. Uh, the mm -hmm. way to do that, uh, let me give for, you... For sequence, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You go into mm -hmm. the sequence here. And background, you can select any color you want, and you can, of course, write hexadecimal color. You have millions of colors possible. Mm -hmm. And you can also work on the opacity, all right? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, it is possible. And um, so now let me um, import another type of media. Let's see how responsive works for images. So let me go in the media library, select an image, for example, this one. Let, us, let me take it here and probably go a bit bigger because it's a bit small, like that. It's not so bad. Okay. So, first of all, one thing I need to be careful of before even we work with the responsive layer is to make sure it lasts, it lasts long enough in time. Here it should work. So, in the image property window now, always in the general tab. Um, now you know it has X and Y position and a certain size, but we're not gonna fit it to window. That's the container fitting the window here, but that's way too big. We don't want that. So let me undo that with the command Z. You can always command Z here, right? Control Z if you're on PC. And uh, now we're gonna take a look at those responsive settings here which is kind of new for us, hitting the plus sign. And now we will be dealing with two important things, uh, size and position. And each element you will be uh, adding to your sequence, you would need to think uh, how you would like this element to behave, to behave, I'm sorry, in terms of size and position. Maybe it's be clear when I show you. First of all, I could leave it like that, proportional, and let's see what it does. Now here it is, and when I am changing the size of my window here, the, this image also changes its size, as you can see. And you need to think, how that would do if I add, for example, another device 
let's see what it looks like on uh, an iPad on a portrait mode, right? Maybe it's a bit small, don't you think? Because mm -hmm. it readjusts yeah. itself proportionally to the size uh, of the player, the new size. So, in this case, it's probably best, probably better to select the fixed size. Mm -hmm. And in this case, let me launch it again. Even though I am resizing the browser window, the element keeps a fixed size, as you can see. And because it is sort of the project logo, it is best that it's kind of big, you know. And more importantly, if I go on the iPad, in this case, it keeps this. Actually, now what I need to tell you about is the position, because as you can see, I didn't do anything with this position. So if I change to another ratio, it disappears, as you can see. But let's uh, work this out. Let's stick with the fixed size, for instance. And now let us take a look at those four things. Here we are given the possibility to uh, set position from the top, right, bottom, and left borders, right, of the player. And you could say, for instance, I would like here that it is stuck to the top border. And also here, I will select and I will say it is stuck to the left border. And what changes now? Let me launch the web browser. I am resizing this sequence, but if we take a look at the image, it keeps a fixed size. It's not getting any smaller or any bigger when I'm getting bigger, right? You can see. And best, it's not floating and disappearing. It remains also its fixed position. And so you now we only have two elements, a video and an image. But imagine when you are, will be building and creating a sequence with many elements, you will need to be thinking for each and every element how you would like this element to behave when uh, moving the thing, I mean the, the browser window. And now if you go back to Clint and switch to the iPad portrait mode, now you can see the element is no longer small because it kept its fixed size and it is not disappeared anymore. It is here to uh, zero pixel stuck to the top and zero pixel stuck to the left. As you can see, right? Okay. This is the old idea. So those are the new responsive settings you need to uh, work with, right? Each element, does it need to be proportional or does it need to remain with its fixed size? And then position. Position is kind of helpful. Would you like to um, put it somewhere and make sure it doesn't disappear, whatever device you will be using. And so this is the idea of responsive we were talking of in the first place, is really to uh, create and design for different devices and screen resolution the way you want your user to experience your content. That's clear enough. Uh, let me do... Simon, a yeah. Yes? Um, because, for example, now the the size is fixed. Yes. But surely, if we if we browse on um on an iPhone, for yeah. instance, yes, wouldn't the jazz element be too big? Excellent remark. Excellent question. Thank you, Melody, for asking. Uh, maybe a bit too big because I made it bigger. Yet, let me make it like that, maybe. But that's the whole thing. You need, if, it, if I put it proportional, then in this case, um, you would think that's good because that's consistent design. In a sense, yes, maybe aesthetically speaking. But in terms of user experience, probably no. Because 
now I have a mouse, so it could be small on my big screen and I could still click it easily and access the content easily. But if it's a very tiny, small image on an iPhone or an iPad, remember you are using your fingers. And I don't know about your fingers, but I know mine are not at, as, as, as thin as a mouse click, you know? So if it comes to buttons and sort of clickable images, it's best maybe if they're not too small. But that's the, that's the whole problem. That's the whole thing. That's the whole design thinking I was talking of. You need to think for yourself. Is this element, maybe that's the thing. Some things should not be displayed too big on a small screen, such as smartphone or tablets, or maybe not appear too small on bigger uh, thing. You understand? Yeah, thank you very much. Is that clear or? For example. Um... Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's clear. Thanks. Like I say, it's a bit maybe confusing before you really uh, manage responsive design quite well to work with the end. I would rather recommend that you launch your sequence uh, in the web browser. And for instance, let me post this fella here. Uh, I'm using Google Chrome, but whether you use Google Chrome or Firefox, who by the way, in edition mode are the two web browser we do recommend when working with Clint. Uh, Safari sometimes has some problem in edit, edition previewing mode, so I really recommend Chrome or Firefox. Here with Chrome, uh, we have a little add-on called Window Resizer, and it also works in Firefox. Uh, it's not even an add-on in Firefox, it's an option in the browser. And here you can see what it looks like, uh, for example, on an iPad uh, portrait mode. If I click that, it automatically readjusts my web window, browser window, as it looked like, as if it was an iPad portrait mode. And that can give you a sense of, is this thing too big or not too big? I could take a look what it looks like on an iPhone landscape mode. This is what an iPhone landscape mode screen resolution look like. You see? Or, and does it look too big to you? Uh, tell, tell please about this add-on for Chrome. Yes, so the thing is an add-on, it's a, an extension, sort of a plugin. Mm -hmm. You can download for free in Chrome. You go in here, oh, that's in French, I'm sorry. Uh, in tools, uh, add-ons and extensions, and you will be looking for one that's here. The symbol is that, and it's called Window Resizer. Window okay. Resizer, and you can really uh, select various types to take a look at what it looks like on different screen resolutions. And for example, here we customize iPhone portrait, iPad portrait to see, uh, we just need to give the resolution and we have certain things to see what it looks like. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So by the way, I think uh, it's probably best, I would say, to work with that rather than to use uh, the end in Clint. Because like I say, before you become an expert, that can be a bit confusing because you can have certain ratio that don't even exist, you know? And then if you do that and you do command R, doesn't look exactly like what I have here, you see? Mm -hmm. So uh, on personal preference, I would rather stick here with the native proportion, maybe take a look sometimes at what it looks like on an iPad portrait mode. But if you really want to see what it looks like uh, on a different device, use the Chrome or Firefox add-on. That's quite useful, right? Mm -hmm. So just about what was uh, Melody saying here, I can go on an iPhone uh, landscape mode and we can see what it looks like on an iPhone. Maybe I think the size, it's a bit big, but not so big. I think it's fine. Okay? Okay, thank you. So that's a sort of terms of workload that's good to know. I can give you another example with an image, uh, maybe. Let's say I'm going to put another image that's sort of a pattern to, which one is it? This one probably, I can't take it. Gonna take this one and put it in the top right corner. So in the image property window here, 
I'm going to say, okay, here you're going to be stuck to the top and stuck to the right. But not going to work with the fixed size. If I do that with a fixed size, look what's going to happen. Oops, I know what I did wrong. Back to Clint, I forgot to put it in time. Remember I told you about that for those who attended the previous webinars? You need to pay attention, even me, I forget. So now, let me play it again. Here it is, all right? And what if I change the size? In this case, it is big. It is too big. Because also this image is secondary. It's not that important as the first image, which is kind of the logo of my project. So in this case, and we could use window resizer to take a look, for instance, at the iPhone landscape mode and see that's a bit big. I don't need maybe to have it so big. So in this case, it is probably more suitable to choose here in the responsive settings to make this image a proportional size. So really, that's the sort of problem or questions you should ask yourself when working with responsive design. Now look at this image. It will uh, react proportionally. It's never too big, right? As you can see, it remains stuck to the top and right to the top right corner it's not disappearing but it's not too big it's not too invading is that clear enough for you guys yeah. yeah you understand the difference between proportional size and fixed size so really really depends what kind of elements you will be using you know um, we've seen now video image maybe we can try to do something maybe with text since this guy is talking, we will add some text as if it were subtitles. So let me take a text, make it from 0 to 10. Uh, this is a webinar uh, about responsive design. This is a Clint webinar, by the way. <clears throat> All right, so now I have this text. I'm going to duplicate it. Right click to duplicate. It comes afterwards. I'm going now to edit this text. Uh, but responsive ain't that easy, buddy. <laughs> Now I'm going to duplicate this text again and let me edit it. Yeah, it's great and it really makes my work look good. Ain't so easy, but it's nice. That's true. So now we're going to work a little bit on this text to see what responsive can do. Basically, it would be the same kind of uh, wonders that we have for images is where to display it, whether fixed or not. And it's probably best for this type of text that could be subtitles to put it uh, somewhere and that it does move. So how can we do that here? We could work here with that. But remember, in order to work quicker and have a more consistent and homogeneous design. Remember what we did last time for those who attended the previous webinar? Do you remember how to apply a given style to a text? Anybody? In the design settings, right? Thank you very much, exactly. So let me go here and clean main menu to design settings. And here we are, design settings, remember, we can work on the skin, textiles, button styles, and fonts. And remember, this is also a difference between parentheses. This is a parentheses. Also a difference between the light edition and professional edition. If you have the professional edition, you can add as many fonts as you want to with the TTF format. Simply drag and drop them here. 
Now let's go back to the text types. We have a certain number of text. Let's go, for example, subtitle. So let's make it, I don't know, crimson text like that. Like this one, make it maybe a bit bigger, 24 font. Align center, why not? It has a shadow, black shadow. Yeah, but let's make it one that looks better. Let's make it this way. All right, but now, last time I said we were not going to take a look at this because this is webinar, uh, this is responsive, and this is what we're going to take a look at now. This is new since Clean 2.11. When you uh, set a given style, and this is pure CSS, by the way, for those who know about CSS, uh, you will also tell him how to react responsibly. You could make it fit to window and say maybe not, uh, in this case, uh, give it a certain width and eight, but more importantly, I'm not gonna work on its width. I would like that to have uh, maximum 8 of 60 pixels. I think that's fine. But I would like that not to move. So I will leave that and I will put it 10 pixels from the left as well as 10 pixels from the right. And maybe some 20 pixels from the bottom. And with a fixed size. I think that should do. That should be pretty well. And whenever I chose that this text box will be always 10 pixels from the left and 10 pixels from the right. So you can see now its width is gray because its width will be different each and every time, if you understand what I mean. So now, maybe that's not clear enough. Let me select this text. This is a clean webinar about responsive design. And now, in the text property window, I will select the subtitle style and it applies the subtitle style but about fonts and shadows and colors etc but it does not apply yet the responsive settings I just told is subtitle to do that in position and size what I need to do is to use this checkbox and hit this checkbox default size and position and this way it applies what I just say it has 10 pixel margin from the left, 10 pixel margin from the right, and 20 pixel from the bottom. And look, if I take a look now here on the iPad portrait mode, same thing. It will remain fixed size and position. This is a way to make sure your things uh, do not disappear. Now let me take a look. This is a clean webinar about responsive design. So it's kind of a small font, font size not so big, but whenever I am moving, oh, right, let me refresh it. If I'm moving, it is always here with this, I'm sure it's not going to disappear. And look, now it's very small, so it went to make two lines as if it were a breaking point by the way. So let me go back to Clint, select this other text here, going back to the native size, and selecting this, I will do the same thing, subtitle style, default size and position of the subtitle style, and same thing here, so that could be a way to do it. So this is a bit smaller here, but it reacts kind of well when I'm working on different screen sizes and different, uh, I could go here, see what's an iPad portrait mode. And as you can see, it looks pretty much, it looks pretty, I could even make it bigger, by the way, because, um, Uh, when you're dealing with text, legibility is important, readability, you know, you, if you put some text you like people to be able to read it and not that it would be uh, difficult for them, you know, to go like, oh, I'm trying to read, it's too small or whatever. It, and at the same time, uh, be careful, it's not, doesn't get too big on a small screen. 
but in this case I would personally think this is yet a bit too small I would even make uh, the font bigger such as maybe 28 I think that could do I think it would probably be the legibility would be better with a little bigger font like that you know I don't know what you think but that would the way I would do it right right so that's pretty much it about uh, text of course we don't have time to go through everything because you use text differently not only for subtitles right you could do text for uh, put some title or presentation of your character or or places or themes or whatever but this is important you know that when dealing with responsive uh, design and responsive mode this is a good way to do it you know and for example let me take this text and move it whenever I move it as you can see this becomes unchecked because the default size and position is no longer respected right so I can do that and be free and if I go back to click this it will go back to the size and position that was set for this given style okay okay is that clear enough or is there any questions about that? Clear. Clear, yeah, clear. Okay, fine. Thank you. So, um, now I'm going to uh, put a button. We're seeing other things here. Remember how to make a button here in the interactivity object. We can add a button, an iframe, which is, only, which is also only for the professional edition or a shape. Let's put a button. Let's put a button. Let's make it last. Here it is. Um, and the button basically uh, will have the same things. Can move it, put it elsewhere. And as I did for text, I'm going to go here in design settings. And regarding button styles, I have certain buttons here. And selecting the arrow right button, can change the color, fonts, blah blah blah, etc. Like you know, and um, I can give it a fixed or proportional size, and I can say, okay, you will remain uh, 10 pixel from the right border, and I could also say 50 pixel from the top border, for instance, right? And that would be a fixed size. Now let's see how it works. This is the button I will write, and I will write down right. Changing the label, remember you can do that. And selecting default size and position, here it is. So here's my button, it is here. And if I am changing the size of my web browser, I'm sure it's never gonna go away because I give it a certain position. Now you might think if I'm going on an iPhone portrait mode, this is a bit too big, maybe not. Um, but it's best to have it bigger than too small, you know. Because once more, your fingers uh, need to have things they can touch. If it's way too small for them, it could be very, very small and tiny like that with this mouse, no problem, you can click. But for a finger, it's maybe best to have something a bit bigger. Okay? And um, this button is not very, very big. But if in the default sizing position, I would change, going back to the design settings, to uh, a proportional size. No, I will write, I'm sorry, proportional size. Then in this case, it would maybe become too small. Like I was saying, here it is. Looks big here, big enough. But what if I'm changing here? Uh, looks kind of good. Here, it's getting very small, as you can see. Maybe a bit too small. Mm -hmm. So, regarding the device you will be using, you need to pay attention to really be picky on selecting a fixed or proportional size. Maybe proportional size doesn't work every time. 
and plus that doesn't look very consistent that in this case the text is very big and the button is very small that could seem awkward and not very well done so you need to really once more I'm sorry for repeating myself but really thinking uh, design thinking graphic design thinking that's the whole new thing right about responsive design so back to Clint um, and again about this button another thing I could do um, I have a right button I could say okay I'm not dealing with top and bottom just want it to be right and in this case it will be always uh, <clears throat> fixed size uh, in the middle it is here in the middle now now I'm gonna add another button duplicate this button then it comes here let me take it and grab it and put it up and then you write down change the level left and select another style which would be arrow left and in this case it goes automatically here All right so, and if I told the arrow left button to be proportional, which is what it is, I'm sorry. Now, let me launch that again. You can see the difference between a fit size button on the right and a proportional size button on the left. If I'm changing those, well, actually, no, <laughs> it is doing the same thing, whereas it shouldn't. Maybe it's a little thing here, but anyway. In this case, both react uh, proportionally, as you can see. For some reason, uh, this one did not say what I just told. So let me do it again, but instead, I will write, I would like the fixed size, please. Please remember it. For some reason, it is not doing what I just say. Yes, it did not uh, save it. I'm a bit sorry, but I think you got it. I think you got most of it, right? <laughs> sorry for the bad example, but it shouldn't be doing that, right? Or let me at least not use that and say, all right, fit size, sir. So, uh, of course, we don't have time to go uh, over everything during a short webinar of this one. But what I would like you to, to know, we've been through uh, video, image, text, and buttons. And uh, it's also it also works for um, iframes but no time for today for working with an iframe. Mm -hmm. But um, what you really need to know is that this responsive mode is not only a new feature in the Clint tool. I would say it's a whole new layer that makes you really uh, think and design your project differently. So it's important that um, if you want to do responsive design, first of all, in the general settings, enable the responsive mode from the start. It's best. It's a good practice, I would say. But don't feel obliged to do it. If you think it can be a little too complicated or you're running out of time or that's not your thing, you're a journalist, you're a filmmaker, you don't feel yourself as a web designer, you don't have the opportunity to work with a web designer, don't feel obliged to do it. It's kind of cool. but. Don't do it if you think it's a bit too long and complicated for you, okay? But if you do, be aware that it really requires you to have a different approach and really think of your project in a design thinking approach. And that also, it will probably take a little more time than if you didn't uh, use the responsive mode. Because for each and every element, you would have to ask yourself those questions, okay? Okay. Yet, I believe it's kind of cool and I would even say powerful because really the, the thing to have your project displayed the way you want on all devices really makes you 
feel the viewer that you really uh, master what you are doing, your project, you know. And um, that's pretty much it. Do you have any more questions about responsive design in Clint? Uh, 